Alrighty. Welcome back to episode two of Suddenly Tenno podcast, everyone. Something old, something new. Today, we're going to be discussing a, a multitude of things. And one of the first things that we wanted to discuss was the Trinity Prime Access, the new one. So, yeah, let's set it off. Trinity Prime itself. What do you guys think about it so far? Frozen, you take the lead on this one. Trinity, Trinity Prime, I'll be honest, you know what? This is, I think I've noticed this, you know, as time has progressed, I think the has got like a better idea of what they want to do with Prime frames and, you know, like in terms of design. And I have to say, first thing I noticed when I saw the frame, she looks absolutely gorgeous. I don't even mind the lobster butt anymore. It's just absolutely beautiful you know like the model itself the, my biggest gripe used to be like you know her previous lobster butt and the helmet itself but they've just modified that they've basically given her a 2.0 upgrade and she looks absolutely gorgeous and the fact that you know she comes with good polarities as well which actually complement how you can build her you can do like two separate builds for her you know all of that works so well together it's, it's really really good in terms of the dual commas, uh, again, they look like a direct upgrade to the normal commas and they look absolutely gorgeous as well. And I love the fact that the way they deploy, you know, when they're unequipped and then you actually equip them, they kind of open the blade out. Just these little things, they, it just seems like a general improvement overall and looks absolutely fantastic. Kawasa Prime Crawl Collar, my only disappointment with that is it's too small. I can't really see it that much, especially if I'm wearing armor on top of it. So, you know, headshot. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same. Um, Trinity Prime looks absolutely incredible. She is absolutely fantastic. The helmet looks great. Um, I like the fact that D took the running joke of the lobster tail and actually, you know, worked with it and actually added it to the Prime. And I agree with you. I think they know what they're doing in terms of what they, you know, what they want to do with Prime frames now. And um, beforehand, we had frames that were getting like insane buffs to the energy, and Trinity Prime seems to be sort of dialed back a little bit. You know, the, she's got extra speed, higher sprint speed sort of thing, rather than massive energy pool or massive armor like some of the other ones have done. Um, so I think they've really done a fantastic job in terms of in terms of that as an upgrade. Um, the dual cameras prime is probably one of the very few people that in the game that actually use the original cameras, uh, the dual cameras. Um, I, I love it. It looks incredible. It's probably my favorite looking one in the game. And it's got the stats to back it up as well. So... Um, it's even in the, if you look at the stats, it's really flexible. There's so many different builds you could do with it. You can go crit status, elemental, use berserker if you want to or not, sort of thing. So it's so flexible and it's got such good stats that it is so good. And it's probably my favorite melee in the game at the moment. Uh, Kavasa Prime, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'll take it or leave it to be honest. Again, it's like uh, Frozen said, it's too small. You can't really see it. Plus, the upgrade is kind of a bit meh, to be honest. You get, what, an extra 10 shields, an extra 10 hit points um, in terms of your your health. And then you get the extra 100 armor, which is nice, but I don't think it was even on there in the first place, um, which was kind of crazy. But, you know, it's a straight upgrade. There's not, not been a prime, you know, we've not had a, a collar at all before. And it's the first companion cosmetic in general. Like we haven't even had a, se a sentinel one that actually adds stats. Honestly, I hope I kind of yeah. hope that's not really a trend that continues. I don't really want to have stats on sentinels as well, um, or on companions in general. I'm not entirely sure whether I like that as a thing. Um, but other than that, I, I've been pretty happy with the prime access. Um, and I do want to give mad props to DE um, with the prime ac uh, the prime accessories. Uh, people were saying that wasn't enough in terms of the actual prime prime accessories, and they came back. They basically said, you know, our bad, added an extra item to it, and then retroactively gave it to everybody that that purchased it. And that's one of the things I love about oh, yeah. DE. They're just that they, you know they'll admit they made a mistake, they'll try and fix the mistake, and you know it's it's much better than just saying them saying nope, sorry, this is the way it is. And that's one of the things I love. But yeah, in general, pretty happy with this. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I personally like my opinion on Trinity Prime is I absolutely love how she looks. The, the 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 lobster butt thingy, it looks fantastic. I'm personally really impressed with how the helmet looks as well. I uh, was uh, streaming earlier this morning and actually took some time and just like looked on the uh, like the she has like little things flowing across her helmet and I took like it's a small little detail but it was really nice to see. I think she looks absolutely fantastic. Polarities on it are very good. One V polarity, one dash polarity, uh, extra compared to the normal Trinity Prime. Higher base shield, higher sprint speed. 
I'm really liking what they did with Trinity Prime, especially the fact that, like you guys said, um, they're not afraid uh, the design to like go with the design that they want to. Previously, Primes looked, especially if you go back to things like Excalibur Prime, it's just basically the normal Excalibur with a bit of a gold tint on it. While you know Trinity Prime looks completely different from uh, the normal Trinity in a good way, I I think I'm really happy about it. Dual Camas Prime, yeah, I I like it. I'm not I wasn't that big of a fan of the, the normal Camas, but the more diversity on it is good. The higher crit, the higher status. I I'm yeah, I'm liking it. I'm liking it so far. The Kafasa Prime colors, uh, it, it's nice. It, it's a, definitely an improvement over having nothing at all. But I. Personally, would have liked to see something else in place of it. But it's a start for Kubros. It's a start. It's still not going to make me switch to a Kubro, but it, it's something. It's something for me, at least. I guess, you know, regarding the Kubro collar, because this is the first time they've actually done like a quote-unquote prime Kubro. So, you know, it, it's it's kind of new ground for them as well to see how they could take it and how the community is going to respond back to it. And, you know, if there was negative and there was a bit of negative feedback and DE took all of that aboard and like Headshot said earlier on, you know, they retroactively made changes to their prime access pack and, you know, compensated people accordingly. And that's one of the best things I love about DE, you know, because they've got such a, they've got, they listen to the feedback that comes in and they, you know, retroact uh, retroactively work towards making sure that everyone is happy as well. Sometimes, you know, decisions have to be made where people will not be happy and, you know, that's not just in the games community. That's everywhere, to be honest. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely happily, uh, happy with what D uh, did. I mean, I don't buy the Prime Access uh, myself, but um, seeing there was, like, you know, people disappointed with it and they, like uh, Hatchot said, they weren't afraid to admit we made a mistake, but we're going to change it. And I was really happy to see that. Even if I don't buy it myself, it's still nice to know that they are willing to change it. So, really good, really good. Now, one of the other things that I think, I think actually, is that all we wanted to say on uh, Prime Access? Do we have anything yeah. else to add, Headshot Frozen? Uh, I think that's pretty much no, it. Really. Nothing for me. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about uh, in this podcast as well was um, the Trinity Prime Access, the farming part of it. Especially, uh, especially um, let's start off with Trinity Prime. How did the farming itself go for you guys? I know like you guys bought Prime Access, but you still like to farm up the sets anyway, even after you buy it, just well, to see how it goes. How did the farming go for you guys, Frozen? Why don't you I think it? in terms of Prime Access, you know what? Usually I don't buy Prime Access, but I got suckered in because it looks so good. So I just bought it this time. So in terms of farming, it took me one second. <laughs> Jokes apart, jokes apart, you know, it, it basically, like some of the parts, my biggest frustrations has been the fact that, you know, everything drops on rotation C, or rather a lot of things drop on rotation C. This is something that's a frustration that's been building up for quite some time with Ash Prime as well, for example. You know, we had two parts drop on tier three defense and tier three survival, and both of them dropped on rotation C and have a pretty low drop chance. I mean, I understand the aspect of increasing the grind in order to have people keep continuously, you know, playing the game so that there's more reason to keep playing the game. But it's a bit ridiculous at the same time because you think about it, you know, tier three defense or tier three survival has loads of Oricon cells as well. See, people complained about, you know, having Oricon cells in the void. And, uh, you know, okay, fair enough, you can have Oricon cells in the void, you can add them to the tier one or tier two tables, that's fine. But the thing is, there are so many rewards which are tier C. So the Oricon cells, uh, the Oricon cell thing is a different problem in itself. So you know, I'll put that aside for now. But the problem is, a lot of stuff drops in tier C rotations. Tier C rotations take so long to get to, and on top of that, they've got such a low drop drop chance as well. You kind of get burnt out on the game as well. So you know, there's that aspect of it. And a couple of the drops I've been kind of lucky with. I got the Ash Prime, uh, sorry, uh, Trinity Prime BP pretty quick. I think in two runs and the Dual Karma Prime BP in two runs, but I still haven't got any uh, blades, I haven't received any handles or any of the Trin uh, Trinity Prime parts. And, you know, it's just kind of grindy, and it can get pretty frustrating as well to, uh, at times, but, you know, it's, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, fair enough, Hatchel. What was your experience so far with the Prime Access farming? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't actually buy um, the, the Prime Access in the end. Um, I don't, I try not to, I try to farm it, you know, um, but it, it, this time I haven't had much luck at all. Ash Prime, I got ridiculously quickly. I got it. I've got everything in like four hours, like the whole set. This time I haven't really had much luck at all. Um, 
in the end the only reason i've got it now is because i've got amazing subs that have uh helped me out with a few bits and pieces or i've bought you know i've bought parts um i haven't seen the blueprint at all i've not seen i i spent quite a few hours farming the chassis um i think it was like five and a half hours it took me to get the, just the chassis uh helmet was a ton of runs like I, I and then we get on to uh having things in ODD and the Derek in general, just the, everything, the drop chances and the way all the loot and the rewards are actually dealt with in the derelict is ridiculously bad. Um it's been a criticism I've had for a long time that the derelict isn't used anywhere near enough. You've got derelict sabotage. You've got um, exterminate. You've got mobile defense. You've got loads of bits and pieces in the derelict, but you they're just they're just not used. We've we've got um, we've got frost prime. We've got mag prime. We've got ember prime all out of the game at the moment because we don't have enough drop locations. But then we've got the derelict, which just sits there completely unused. You could even have a law based background for why they're in the derelict now. Um, because Frost, Mag, and Ember are the oldest primes. So having the towers that they would have originally dropped in go, you know, fall into disrepair and become derelict makes a lot of sense. But for some reason, instead of adding things into the derelict and making things farmable still, potentially spreading out rewards instead of stacking everything on rotation C, we've just got a completely unused part of the game that just doesn't, no one seems to actually do anything with. So, and it, it, I mean, this isn't the first time. Vault Prime was ridiculously bad. Ash Prime was ridiculously bad. Nova Prime systems are a myth. Um, Vault with Vault Prime, like ever since Vault Prime came out, I got my first chassis last week or something like that when I was farming for Trinity Prime. That was my first chassis since Vault Prime came out, and that says a lot about the RNG on Rotation C that it's taken me however many months. It's what six months, maybe slightly more since Vault Prime came out, and I—that's the yeah. first. That's the first chassis I've seen since, and yeah. that on itself says everything, because the void is so full of rubbish. The people were complaining on the forums about former. Former is a myth now. It's for some reason it seems ridiculously difficult to get them, um, without just farming constantly and cut, like just you've got to farm former now. It's not something you can just build up. Um, but we've got things like if you go and do sabotage, you've got like a single common three or a single uncommon five. And those sorts of rewards should not be happening in the void because it just clogs up the loot tables and means everything is so painful. Like I understand the fact that they've got to keep people in the void. They've got to keep people playing, but burning people out on the game, farming for all these parts there's got to be a sort of a balance between the two. And that's where I think things are sort of, are not really working entirely right just now. Yeah, no, I agree. I would definitely like them to see spread out the loot more in, in the void. For example, um, well, yeah, with Trinity Prime Systems, what do we have in Tower uh, Tower 3 Survival Rotation C right now? Uh, Nova Prime uh, Chassis dropped in there. Ash Prime Systems, uh, Fault Prime shall see, and the Helmet Drop the Tower uh, 3 Survival as well. And now um, I think the Duo Kama Prime Blueprint drops there in there as well. I would love to see them just move some of the older Prime parts that are still in the Void over to Tower 1 and Tower 2 uh, missions and spread them out in a derelict. We, we had two new uh, missions come in uh, this update as well. Uh, Orokin, uh, Derelict, Mobile Defense and Sabotage. Use those, fill those up with void parts or some of yeah. the older parts that might be you know i think everyone here is uh, drowning in bow prime ornaments or things like that um you know back uh, when ember prime was still around the ember prime helmets drop, make those drop in the orican derelict give I mean, them some space but not clog everything up in tower three survival or tower four defense or things like that yeah that's that's a good point i mean just thinking about it now you know you've got all these rotation rewards like say you know in non-endless missions i'm oh, sorry in endless missions you've got like you know rotation a b c um instead of removing or vaulting stuff you could put it you can remove orkin cells you can remove keys you can remove core packs from the void and the derelicts keep those rewards as part of the normal gameplay so people still have a reason to play the normal nodes 
So, you know, you go into the normal node and you farm for keys, uh, void packs, uh, void pack, core packs, uh, keys, and, you know, normal, like, rare resources. You can still add Orkin cells as a drop in the void because at the end of the day, it's the void. You would think Orkin cells would drop in the Orkin void, but instead they're part of the rotation rewards. And, you know, they dilute the tables even further. What's the point of diluting the tables to the point where, you know, you can't even get anything useful? I mean, at this point, Dimitri and me, uh, and headshot you know we've been playing this game for so long we pretty much have most of the stuff we need but putting that aside thinking as a perspective of a new person coming in trying to play this game it can get it can get pretty daunting as well you think to yourself you know it can get very frustrating as well because you know trying to farm for something and you're not getting the parts you need and you know not everyone has the same kind of re resilience or the attention span or you know they don't feel like they want to grind this much in a game which they want to casually pick up and play and as we already know uh, you know, Warframe has a pretty substantial uh, casual gaming community in the first place. So how do you balance something which is, you know, you've got two extreme ends. You've got the casual community, and then you've also got the community like where, you know, you go for maxed up bills, you go for former Miller bills. Like, say, for example, you know, this is one of the complaints that's been happening a lot, that people have too much former. We are struggling to have former, you know, in, in our situation. So how do you have a balance for that as well? You can remove the um you know you can have like former in rot uh, in rotation a for tier one or tier two uh endless defense missions or survival missions and then you know for tier three tier four just had prime parts you know it still gives you that balance and it gives a better spread and you can bring back some of the old stuff which has been bolted as well so it's just a matter of you know kind of moving here and there and you know adjusting it so that you know it seems fair all the way around but at the same time you can't make it that you know you get everything in one sitting because obviously that would defeat the purpose of the game as well. So you do need some sort of grind as well. So I understand that aspect as well. But at this moment, you know what it feels like? It's kind of like paraphrasing the Assassin's Creed. Um, you know, what's the what's the motto? You know, it, it's basically paraphrasing it. Everything is forbidden. Nothing is permitted. So, you know, it just feels very, very awkward because of that. Yeah, no, I uh, agree. For example, um, I would uh, also one of the things that honestly like bothers me quite a bit with uh, the void uh, and the uh, orc and derelict as well is uh, the amount of keys you get in the lower level missions For, uh, i've spent about 12 15 hours already um uh, over the past couple of days trying to form up myself a trinity prime blueprint um i don't i can't even count anymore how many tower one mobile defenses or tower two capture keys i've gotten at rota like rotation c and orc and derelict it, I feel like the keys are at that point in time, especially if you're doing like the Tower 1 and Tower 2 uh, missions, um, you don't want keys there. If a new player comes in and they're, you know, just doing their vo uh, first Void mission and they're like, oh, I'm going to do a Tower 1 capture and they manage to fight their way through the mission um, and then at the end they get a Tower 1 mobile defense and they're like, well, this was useless. I feel like, and uh, yeah, it feels unpredictable. It, it feels like I, I personally believe that the keys shouldn't be in the rotations. It should be something that left for the normal star map, like you said. And uh, taking out the keys and things like the Oricon cells, as you mentioned earlier, um, adds places for things like Forma or more prime parts, like some of the older parts. We could uh, spread out uh, Frost and Mag and Ember, like Hatchfield said, in the, in the Orc and Derelict, make, like, add a lore reason for the, the towers they were in being corrupted by the uh, thing or being like uh, falling, falling out of repair and things like that, and just add it back in like that. I feel like there's a lot of dilution and a lot of unnecessary grind. I agree, we need to keep the grind. That is what Warframe is about in, in essence as well. Just there is farming going to be involved. You want people to play your game. You want people to farm. Farming is fun. I find it a lot of fun. But going through so many almost useless drops i would say just to get to maybe have a chance of getting that one part that i actually want feels annoying sometimes yeah i'd agree with that and it's just yeah it's so frustrating i'd, I'd actually like to see things like progress to the stage where i mean the whole the former argument like having former maybe as a um a thing you could buy off barricadier for ducats so you could change the, your like you could actually change your crap prime parts into actually something useful. I I just don't understand like because if you if you hear a lot of our arguments, it's that we are just getting all these crap rewards and we can't manage. It's taking us a long time to farm these things, 
and this is from you know three people that I spend a lot of time in the game. Like I can't yeah. imagine this from someone that just plays the game casually because we we play it you know every day almost to for a certain amount of time and even we can't manage to get the drops. I can't imagine what it's like for someone that's a bit more casual. I yeah. I can I... imagine just how frustrating that is. Yeah, that's a good point Defeat brings up as well in chat. You know, getting keys on a rotation seat in an ODD or an ODS or whatever. Why are keys in a rotation seat? Rotation seat is supposed to be the rare thing anyway. See, here's the thing. I kind of feel bad because I feel like I'm slamming DE, but that's not my point. I'm just trying to make sure, you know, we can provide some sort of constructive criticism in order to improve, you know, the RNG aspects and, you know, a risk reward kind of system as well. But... It's just that because of the rewards we've currently been getting, you know, it's very frustrating, both as a new... I'm trying to look at this from the perspective of a new player as well as an old player, and it just seems unfair both ways. So, yeah, no, I have to agree with that. I mean, I can, if you... Sorry, go on. Uh, like with the, the ODD example, uh, I think I did a 10-hour stream yesterday, and I think about eight hours of that was spent uh, farming Auric and Derelict, and that was an eight-hour portion of my day that I just spent farming orc in derelicts and getting keys in rotation uh, C, so like uh, rotation C. I cannot imagine what a new player who can who spends one, maybe two hours um, a day on the game must go through to get that Trinity Prime part. That must be a pain to go through. Yeah. I mean, you know, on the topic of Ember Prime parts, you said earlier on, you know, because I recently started streaming and like you, I started spending a lot of time in the void as well, you know, helping people farm for stuff. Just as an example, you know, uh, out of the number of times you went in to farm for any specific set or whatever, I think in the two rotations we had for Barracketeer, I must have sold close to 500 Ember Prime helmets. And I haven't, I got two Ember Prime BPs, you know, just as an example to show how the RNG aspect or, you know, how it was kind of on the silly side, so to speak. So, you know, some sort of balance there would have been obviously nice, but, you know. Yeah, I think uh, just rotation C needs a rework, um, as in T shouldn't be afraid to move some parts around in the derelict or in the, the void. Remove some of the more common things like key packs, uh, Oricon cells, um, core packs, things like that. Uh, move them around or even remove them um, and add the older parts and the older things back into it. Like move some of the older sets around. Like I think. Rhino Prime is a pretty old set. Move some of that around to, um, you know, rotation A, rotation B of like the higher level survivals or the endless missions. Move them to like things like Tower 1 and Tower 2 captures instead of having them dilute the, the higher level drop tables where, you know, people are trying to farm all the new things. I think that would fix a lot of the problems with the void and with the farming that people have. Anything else you uh, guys want to add into that or... Uh, not really. I think that's about it, really. It's covered most of the aspects. Yeah. All right, then. On to the next uh, subject. I feel like uh, we've closed that one off pretty well. Um, mini bosses. Things like, uh, well, mini bosses. I'm in particular uh, the assassins. Let's start off with uh, the stalker. What do you? How do you guys feel about that one? Uh, Headshot. What's your opinion on that one? To be honest, I. I am going to go probably a little against the trend and sort of think that Stalker doesn't need a lot, a lot more changes. Um, he need, he does need to be a bit more, a bit more scary. So, you know, we've, at the moment we've got a lot of notice that he's coming. I'd actually like to see you get maybe just one flash and then maybe for a few rooms, he would stalk you sort of thing. So like you'd get a small glimpse of him just to sort of remind you he's there sort of thing. So he's a bit more, so he's a bit more spooky sort of thing, but uh, in terms of like more damage, I, I don't, I, I don't think he does. I mean, a lot of the criticisms of Stalker and everyone going, oh, I've one shot Stalker, I one shot Stalker. It's because everyone's running, you know, they've got the max frames, max weapons and things. But if you're a low level player, say you've gone and killed Vor for the first time. And then a few missions later, Stalker, you know, RNG says Stalker's going to come and visit you. Like, you don't want him to be more powerful. I know he does scale because of level and things like that, but 
I in yeah, I don't I just don't think he needs a lot of a change, in all honesty. The ones the one that I really need think needs focused on is um Zanuka. G three is fine. G three is absolutely fine the way they are. They're pretty tough. They've got a decent amount of sort of crowd control. They're kind of fun to fight as well. I would actually keep them exactly the same, but Zanuka needs to be harder. Just comes in and sort of dies yeah. in a horrible way every single time he does anything. Um, yeah, I agree, but uh, let's uh, keep it uh, related to talk for now. We'll go yeah, over yeah. Zanuka and G3 in just a second. Uh, Frozen, you have anything to say that you want to say about Stalker? I think pretty much what uh, Headshot said is correct. Uh, I think the Stalker in terms of... See, here's the thing. The balancing is, again, it's kind of like a thin red line. How do you balance something for people who have maxed out frames and then make sure that balance sort of scales down effectively for new players who don't have that maxed out mods and maxed out weapons and everything? It's it, it can get pretty tough. So in that aspect, I really think Stalker is kind of balanced Maybe not as balanced for us because, you know, six former Sancti Tigris or five former Rhino Prime or Valkyr or whatever. Choose anything, a maxed up build, a maxed up load, a loadout. You get enough fanfare coming in from the Stalker. So you already know when he's coming. You can put a waypoint down. All three of your other buddies come in as well. Or you can be playing solo and you can still one shot him. You can one shot him before he even gets up. I personally think, in terms of changes that should be made, you could scale him up in a sim in a, a different fashion. So say, you know, when he spawns at a lower level, he gives his fanfare, you know, the lights flicker three times, and then a couple of seconds later, he uh, gets up from the kneeling position or whatever. But then as you kill him, he starts scaling. Sort of like, uh, I don't know if anyone's played Shadow of Mordor, but they've got a nemesis system where if you kill an enemy or if they kill you, they get more powerful. They get like a, you know, uh, a posse that walks with them, etc. So, you know, basically that kind of scaling. So say, for example, you kill a stalker the first time. You killed him when he was kneeling down. Next time you kill him, you know, you get less warning. And each time you keep killing him, you get less and less warnings. And obviously it caps to a certain point where you have... So this is like towards the end game stage, so to speak, uh, quote-unquote end game, that is, uh, where you get to a stage where the lights flash for a, co a couple of seconds, the lights flash, and literally two seconds later, the, sp the stalker will spawn but he will slash dash towards you from a random direction anywhere around you. So you won't actually see it coming. So it basically gives you enough preparation time that a stalker is coming, but not enough preparation time that you can set it up, have a whole group working together and just waiting for him to one shot him as soon as he spawns. So that way you have a bit of a challenge as well. Maybe like his slash dash just doesn't do damage, you know, the initial one. It just kind of stuns you if, it, if you get hit by it or something like that. You know, anything... So that, you know, obviously, as he spawns, he doesn't one-shot you with a bleed proc or something silly like that. Because, obviously, that's not going to be fun either. So it's just a, just a way to make the fight feel a bit more scary. Because at the end of the day, Stalker should be a bit more scary. He's way too easy right now. He, like, you, you, get that, you get that message that, you know, Stalker's coming. You're like, all right, time to get some free uh, parts from him. Hopefully, we get it. One-shot him. And he's like, damn it, we didn't get the part we needed. And that basically, that's just the whole grind of doing that over and over and, you know, that gets very frustrating as well after a while, you know, uh, specifically with some of the drop uh, tables as well. But I think in terms of the actual fight, I think it's pretty balanced. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think the fight itself um, is balanced. I would like to see him have more, like Hedgehog said, more, a bit more, well, like you both you know, said, a bit more spook to him. He just feels... Like you said, we just wait for him to spawn in the usual fanfare and he just sits up and before he even gets a chance to move, he already has like four tone cores aimed at his head ready to unload on him. I really would like to see that change. Um, think like one of the ideas that uh, one of my viewers had for it as well. Um, have him spawn in a different like in a different room than you and just, you know, slowly hunt you down if you're on the later stages where, you know, um, with that system you mentioned, uh, Frozen, with the later stages, have him hunt you down instead of just spawning next to you. Have him erupt from a slash dash, things like that. I think he needs to be a bit more spooky, like you guys say as well. I would love to see that. I think the actual fight itself is fine, though. I had uh, to go up against him, uh, I think, yesterday again. Una is doing a solo uh, orc and derelict defense run. And I knew where he was going to spawn in. And I was like, all right, eh, it's just stalker. Next run, um, one of the syndicates spawned in. And I was like, oh, oh crap, Nulokas here. This is going to be painful. 
it, it felt like Stalker just isn't scary anymore for higher level players. And I would still like to, at least, even if the fight is all right, I would like to at least see him retain the spookiness to him. Um, on to uh, Zanaka Hunter, though, because Hatchel, um, <laughs> we all agree on this one. Yeah. He needs yeah. a buff. He needs a buff. The problem with Zanaka Hunter is, I don't, I guess it's, it's a twofold problem. It's a bit more complex because, say, for example, you're playing with a mag. You know how mags polar, polarize scales with versus shielded enemies. So you can effectively kind of just nuke Zanaka Hunter. And I've actually done that a couple of times when we were farming for cores on Triton. Like, we saw the flashing lights, and I didn't even realize it until I walked over the loot and I picked up. I thought I got an Oberon part, but nope, got a Detron part. And that's when it clicked in my mind that a Zanaka showed up. And I asked you on stream as well. I was like, wait, did the Zanaka show up? And you're like, yeah, he did show up. And I, I didn't even realize it because I just insta-killed him with my mag. But at the same time, you know, he spends so much time bouncing around. He doesn't have enough HP. He, 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 he doesn't do enough damage. And it doesn't feel like a challenge. It's like skeet shooting a, I don't know, a random bird or whatever, whatever people like shooting anyway. It's like skeet shooting at this point. And... You know, that feels uh, a bit of an issue. I mean, for example, you know, just to see what the mission would be like, you know, when the Zanaka Hunter catches you, I tried just standing still and letting him go capture me. It took him an entire bloody minute to capture me because he just kept jumping from wall to wall and slowing me down, then jumping again to the wall, then shooting at me, then jumping to another wall. And then finally he uh, pounced on me, you know, while I stood right in front of his face and then he finally captured me. So I think... That's probably something to do with maybe the AI as well, or in general, you know, he needs a refurbishment, basically. We need Zanaka Hunter 2.0. Yeah, I agree with that one. In fact, I just realized that I've never actually been captured by him before, so I don't know what the mission is like because he is just not a threat. Yeah. I've I'll be never honest. been... Hmm? I was just going to say, the mission is actually pretty fun when you get captured by the Zanaka Hunter, but it's just it takes so bloody long to get captured in the first place. You're like, is it even worth it? But yeah, you, you should try it out. It's actually pretty fun. I'll definitely give it a shot then when he shows up again. But actually, uh, any op uh, any what are your opinions on it and the Zanaka Hunter? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely needs, for definite, it needs to do more damage. I've done exactly the same as Frozen. You just stand there and wait for them to try and kill you, and it takes forever to do it. Um, with Stalker, if you stand still, you'll be dead pretty quickly. Um, Zanuko, it just takes forever. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing some of the... Um, powers from the bursas come over on towards Zanuka. Uh maybe the, uh, people are going to hate me for saying the nullifier thing but maybe actually that would be not a bad idea the um you know what the the, the bursa does it shoots that blob, yes. that blob nullifier thing at you so you've got the option mm. to get rid of it still but you know if you if you're paying attention or whatever and you get this thing on you it could actually be quite a good thing um it would make the fight a bit different as well just it, it needs just a bit of an addition really it needs more damage and it needs i, I think it needs that nullifier th a field as much as people are going to hate me for say that saying that <laughs> i honestly wouldn't even mind if you got the nullifier shield i would he just needs more buffs he needs more utility at this point in time he feels like well his purpose is to kill you but he is not good at it at all i i've honestly died more times to uh well things like bombards or even like normal butchers than i've died to Z uh, zanaka hunter at this point i really wish he would just uh, get some more buffs things like the nullifiers what i would personally love to see uh, from him as well is if he would uh, if it wasn't just one but like a couple of them like the hyena pack where it does just a couple of zanaka hunters coming after you and then add in uh, things like the nullifiers and then i feel like he would be way more of a threat but at the moment, he just he needs a buff badly. Or maybe if it came in with a couple of hyenas or something. Yeah, even if the hyenas themselves uh, come in, that would be uh, awesome as well. Just something. <laughs> D, please, he needs something. Anything. You know, it's funny you mentioned about the, you know, waiting for the uh, Zanuka Hunter to kill you. I was doing this as well. The first time the Zanuka Hunter came in as well, uh, I just wanted to see, you know, how the capture mission would be because, you know, when DE said that he can capture you, etc. I just wanted to do it. So I stood still waiting for him to capture me and he took like two minutes, three minutes. So I turned away, picked up my bottle of water and I'm drinking water and all of a sudden a bloody uh, corpus tech comes up behind me and just, you know, annihilates me from behind and the stalker Zanuka gets confused and then starts fighting uh, the infested. Or whatever i think it was the infested because it was like one of those invasion missions i think it was or whatever whatever it was i don't know what it was i think 
and he just the starts grenier. fighting the other bit. Yeah, uh, probably the grenier, whatever. My brain is not working in that sense right now. I can't remember because it was so long ago. But the thing is, it was absolutely hilarious. I got killed by a corpus tech while waiting for the Zanuka hunter to actually kill me, and he did absolutely nothing. Yeah, he needs a buff, definitely. Um, on to the uh, Grenier counterpart, though. Uh, G3. Now, I personally think G3 is just fine as they are. Any opinions on that? How do you guys feel about the G3? I personally agree with you. I think the G3 are pretty well balanced. They do a lot of damage, but, you know, they've got that CC as well. But, you know, you can still competitively... Oh, I say competitively. You can still effectively stay alive and you can still fight them. And it actually is a pretty fun fight because you're fighting three of them. And, you know, you have to deal with their shielded ones or the knockdowns and all that kind of stuff. So I really think it's a pretty well-rounded fight as well. And, you know, the scaling because, you know, they have armor. It scales pretty nicely as well at times. Although, you know, if it gets too high, it can be a bit ridiculous, especially if you're playing with new players. But putting that aspect aside, I really think the entire fight in itself is actually pretty balanced and very well done. I'd completely agree with that. The G3 are, um, I'd say they're pretty, they're pretty much fine as they are. Um, yeah, you can like I've I've seen Gallium in the chat saying you, you know you can CC them. Yeah, that's fine. There's there's not it's not a bad thing that you can CC them. In all honesty, um, maybe again once again maybe they could come in with one of the if you've uh, ever played the Nightmare Raid. Uh, maybe they could come in with one of those little little nullify drones. Um, I hate to suggest nullifiers for everything, but actually it wouldn't be that bad. Um, I, in terms of, like, they do a decent amount of damage. If you're not paying attention, they will kill you pretty quickly. It's another one of those ones that if you stand still, you're going to die fairly quickly. Yeah. Yes. Fair enough. Um, and then on to the last one. Now, I've heard you, uh, while we were doing the preparation for this podcast, I heard you guys come up with some new ideas for the death squads. And you people are evil. <laughs> it's not My evil. God. It's just some good but, ideas. <laughs> anyway, um, the death squads themselves, how do uh, you feel about that? Uh, Hedgehog. In general, some of the death squads are fine. And some of them are really, really bad. Um, like, I mean, it, I think it's Steel Meridians, which just comes in with a whole bunch of rollers. I mean, when was the last time anybody died to the rollers? Like, come on. Like, the if you get, have Red Veil or New Loka come after you, you're like, oh, crap. Or even the um, Cephalon, the Cephalon ones with the, um, the, the scavenger drones that come in. Like, those ones, people actually, like, genuinely, genuinely fear, to be honest. Um, but then you, like I say, you get the, uh, you get the mowers or you'll get the, the, the rollers and stuff. And you just, it, it's not, you, you're not feared, you don't fear them at all. Um, they really need to be, uh, upped up their game. And, you know, um, I don't know whether Frozen wants to talk about the idea because it was more Frozen's idea than it was mine. Um, so I'll let Frozen have that, but they, they definitely need adding on to to give them that fear factor like like i say you, the, the rollers are just a, they're, they're just a joke quite frankly that that's all they are i think in terms of the death squads um just taking the idea of you know like if you piss off a faction you know they're sending one unit you know multiple of one unit after you and you know depending on which unit it is you can deal with them pretty easily or it can be a bit hard with New Loka, you, you've got loads of Ancients, you've got Healers, Disruptors, etc. And, you know, you can provide the Auras and you've got Toxin Procs, you've got the Arson Blasts and knocking you down. It can get pretty, you know, hectic very, really quickly unless you've got something specifically designed to kill those guys real quick. Putting that aside, New Loka, I think, you know, are pretty, are pretty much on point and I'm okay with New Loka. Red Veil, I haven't really had a chance to fight them that often, but a couple of times when I did and, you know, those... Uh, those runners, uh, what's it called? The chargers, you know, they're pretty quick and they can get you. And if they get close enough, you're going to die because they do a lot of damage. But then you've got Steel Meridian and then you've also got uh, Parent Sequence. You know, I find them a bit underwhelming. So instead, I was thinking of an idea like give the Death Squad something to actually be, you know, fearful about. So upgrade them. Instead of having one type of unit, make the Death Squad comprise of a bunch of units. So say... So say, for example, as an arbitrary number, a death squad spawns 10, uh, 10 rollers. 
you change that out. So you have two bombards, two gunners, uh, four lancers, uh, sorry, elite lancers, maybe one eviscerator or something like an actual dead squad, which comprises of elite units, elite Eximus units, so to speak, you know, so they actually have a challenge. So, you know, you actually have a challenge to fight them because dead squads at this point is either free XP or free Oberon parts. Or you know maybe sometimes some decent loot as well, or you know some ex uh, the uh, what's it called not Xmas the blueprints for the specters. That's basically what they are. I really think that you know if you change them out. So say for example in terms of parent sequence, you can change it out. So you have say two bursas, two fusion mowers, two you know those uh, uh, shockwave mowers, and the rest can be normal mowers. So you just have like a full mower squad, or perhaps you could even have like uh, uh, the uh, links come in as well, or you could have a, a hyena pack come in, like one of the hyena pack comes in, or maybe even a Zanuka hunter comes in. You know, just mix and match it up in order to make it both scary and actually a fun fight to fight alongside the normal enemies which you're fighting at the time as well. But then on top of that, there's also the issue with certain factions, like say Cephalon Suda, because who would you choose as enemies for, or rather uh, units which they could use? Right now they use, what, do, what does Cephalon Suda right now use? The scavenger drones, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what could you substitute that with? I'm not actually sure. Perhaps it could be something like which the Cephalon takes over. So it could be kind of like the neural uh, neural sentry from the Orokin, where it hijacks some sort of enemies or something like that. But actually, no, that can't happen because that's with the uh, Arbiters of Hexes. They can take over those people. So you know, my point is there needs to be a bit more diversity and there needs to be a bit more challenge, especially with certain enemies. Anyway like a certain uh, factions when they send their death squads in. I mean, I've, I'm with New Loka, so I have absolutely no, nothing to be worried about because New, New Loka is my best friends and they're never going to hunt me. They're going to hunt other people down. It's all good. But, you know, and uh, I mean, even to this day, when I see a New Loka death squad come in, you know, I panic at times, depending on what frame and weapon I've taken. And, you know, people have seen me panic as well on stream. You know, I, I'm not particularly proud about it, but <laughs> it's all good. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's about it, really. Sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Like, New Loka is the only one that I actually, like, if I'm uh, uh, playing with the viewers, uh, if uh, if I see New Loka spawn on me, it's the only type I'll say, all right, guys, we have New Loka incoming. Let's group up. Let's, we need to take care of this. Otherwise, people are going to die. And I feel like uh, Suda can be a bit uh, difficult for people uh, as well. Uh, Red Veil, I've seen uh, some people die to as well, but those are about uh, the only three. The, the Rollers, um, the, the Hexer Squad, the Moa from Perrin, I don't. I feel like they need like buffs or more diversity, like you said, make them feel like actual squads of different types of enemies. Because at the moment, they are very, very underwhelming. Uh, all right. Um... You guys have anything else uh, to add to the uh, the death squads themselves? I don't think uh, I have anything left. I would kind no, of. No, I think I was just going to add. Yeah, like, I I would kind of like to see maybe a faction standing thing uh, increase or decrease depending on whether you kill them or not. Um, because at the moment you can basically just completely ignore the death squad. If you don't want to deal with them, you don't have to deal with them. You can just walk off and leave them. But it would be kind yeah. of nice if the faction that you know obviously it would be like doing a, a mission for that faction so if you got like um the cephalon one then i can't remember who they're friendly and um allied with but um basically if you killed the cephalon one then the factions that hate the cephalon would give you some standing for it and that would actually be kind of a nice little thing to tie in the whole every every action you do has a reaction sort of thing because at the moment you can just be like, "Oh, look, they're they're there now. I'm going to leave." So, um, I would actually kind of like that to be sort of tied in a little bit more. To yeah, your actions have consequences. So this basically kind of ties back with you know the, what we were talking about in the previous uh, 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 podcast as well. You know, basically more immersion and you know having like the whole cause and effect kind of aspect of it as well. So you know, like if you fight a certain faction. And, uh, you know, they're sending their death squads. In this particular case, why are they sending their death squads? Yeah, they want to kill you, but that's about it. How about, you know, you get rewarded for something like that? Even if it's a small reward, if it's, say, 500 affinity towards, you know, the players, um, you know, if they kill the entire death squad and they survive, you know, even that in itself would be quite a lot because, you know, especially you need to take into account, you know, how much people play. If they play a lot and they're fighting death squads every single day, 
you know, they've got the 20K limit at Mastery 20 and or 21, whatever it is. And then on top of that, you know, you're earning all this 500 affinity as well, you know, or uh, points towards the faction you are positive with. I think, you know, that, that could kind of go a bit haywire. So I guess it would still need to be relooked at and rebalanced accordingly so that, you know, the point game gain isn't so high that, you know, it becomes an issue. But at the same time, it's not so low that it feels completely pointless as well. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I wish uh, to see them have more impact uh, as well. Um, make it. I would say make it a timed uh, thingy though. For example, if you're doing a survival and you plan to go for forty minutes, that you know don't have to worry about you know avoiding ki uh, killing the uh, syndicate mission with, uh, for like forty minutes. Like have them on a two three minute timer after you, and if you know you don't kill any of them and they uh, don't manage to kill any of you, that they just be like, all right, we're out of here. See ya. Things like that uh, to avoid, you know, any issues with uh, endless missions. But other than that, I think that's a very um, good suggestion. That would it would it would be a tiny uh, thing to add, but it would still be like uh, just that little bit more of uh, immersion to the game. Just gives you that like uh, just an extra little choice thing you can do. Any uh, anything else we want to add in uh, to uh, the death squads or not? I think um, that's about it, really. Yeah, I think that's about it for that. Yeah. All right. Um, how long do we have left on the timer? I think we're already at about, about ten minutes, forty-five minutes. Because I missed, uh, I missed about yeah. five, ten minutes as well. Remember, so. All right. Um, in that case, uh, the last thing we had prepared for today uh, was um, events in general, and the tactical alerts and how we feel about those. Um, in particular, like the things like the repeat weapons uh, for the older and newer players. Um, Hatchel, you had some, uh, I think you had something prepared for this, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it was just more along the lines of we need more actual events. At the moment, the sort of story in Warframe is that the thing of the Corpus versus the Grenier has kind of gone a little bit stale. Um, there's not really a lot going on. I know we've got the sentients that are currently sort of waking up. In terms of actual events, proper events, we haven't had one since... I think I uh, well, it was the Alad V versus Nefanyo one. In terms of actual proper events, we haven't had one since then. Uh, we've had tactical alerts, and you know, tactical alerts are fair enough. They're sort of little things that you can do with the resources they've already got in the game, sort of thing. But we need a sort of an actual event to keep people engrossed in the game, keep people actually sort of feeling the game, if that makes sense. Um, like, act, like what they're doing has a reaction or something. It's it's something we, I keep going back to is the the cause and effect that your actions have consequences that you're doing something active to the game. The tactical alerts don't really do that. Um, they're a nice way of bringing back old weapons, and um, that is something that I've talked about a little bit before. Um, with people that already have those weapons at at the moment. A lot of the sort of older players aren't that amazed at these tech alerts because a lot of them have the weapons already. And I know this is going to come out and sound really, really selfish, but we already have the weapons. There's no real hype for it because in terms of like, if you don't have the weapon, then you get a nice shiny new thing out of it. If you already have the weapon, you get absolutely nothing for it. And what I was reading like the other day was that even if you sell that event weapon, you lose the slot, which is kind of crazy. I don't know whether that is true or not, but I was reading someone was talking about it the other day. Which means that you don't even get a slot out of it. So basically, if you already have the weapon, you get nothing from the event. Um, that doesn't seem right, but hmm, I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually happening. So it's it's one of those things that in terms of you've got to keep people hyped in a game, in a game like Warframe where it's constantly evolving, there's constantly stuff going on, um, and it's, it's a constant development cycle. You need to keep people involved, you need to keep people going, keep people hyped, and it, events and stuff are the best way of doing that. And if you're going to keep your old players playing, then, I mean, even if the game says or re recognizes you already have that weapon, and it will reward you with 25, 50 rare 5 cores, something like that, you know, just to because at the moment it's just one of those things where the older players get nothing because they already have it. If that makes sense, I don't. I, yeah. you know, I'm I'm not one of these people that are like, oh my god, I did all this a year ago and nobody should have this weapon again. 
That's not what I'm saying. It's it's the fact that those that already do have it don't get anything from the event. And in terms of a hype, in, in, in terms of keeping people engrossed in the game, that's not a particularly good way of getting things going. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think that's all I've got to say on that, really. Um, but we, we just need something that will keep people involved again. Uh, we need those events where people feel like they're actually having an effect on something. Like the, uh, I keep going back to the one with the, 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 um, well, the, the, the relays. That's what I meant to say. Beta where, for in the event. Yeah, yeah, that event. Where I think there was an actual, like, the, the, the effect was, well, the cause was that the Tenno basically were trying to see whether DE were going to blow up one of their own relays. And the effect was they did. Yep. And events like that keep people going. It keeps people hyped. It keeps people, you know, engaged with the game. And in a game, like I say, in a game like Warframe, you need to keep that going. Yeah, I, th- I agree. Uh, frozen, go ahead. Sorry. I think in terms of the events as well, I'm, I agree with Headshot. Because I've been playing, you know, for so long, I've done every single event. I've done everything and I've got all the rewards. So in terms of any exclusives, I'm not missing anything. But when these new exclusive or weapons come back, it I don't mind that they're coming back. But again, like Headshot said, you know, I think, you know, if you've already got the rewards, there should be like a system in place. So say, for example, you've already got a uh, Prisma uh, Gorgon Wraith, right? So the event basically retroactively switches out the reward. Instead of giving you a Gorgon Wraith, it gives you... Well, I don't know, 50 rare five cores or something like that in its stand, in, in its place. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would appreciate something like that. Like just retroact- uh, retroactively, you know, see in your inventory, if you actually already have a Gorgon Wraith, then it'll switch the rewards to 50 gold cores because there's no point having a second one. It's not going to really do anything. And if what Headshot said is correct, you know, where the mod, where the weapon slot is removed as well, then there's all the more reason to do something like this so that, you know, people actually have a reason to keep the reward. Uh, I mean, like, a reason to do the event as well. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do enjoy the tactical alerts. The, one of the tactical alerts where we had the escalation, I absolutely love that one. But at the same time, you know, most of these tactical alerts are basically either free cores or free potatoes or whatever. And, you know, just for the sake of doing another weapon itself, uh, even though we can't keep the slot or whatever. So I think the reward system for the tactical alerts in itself could actually be, you know, looked at again. And on top of that, like Edshot said, I think more events which have an actual cause and effect would be absolutely fantastic, you know, to um, uh, to engage the community in order to have more, you know, like interaction with the community. So say, for example, you know, like, uh, as you know already, Dimitri, me and he- Headshot have been massive EVE, on, uh, EVE Online players. And mm-hmm. in EVE Online, there's the whole cause and effect. You do not defend a system from an enemy attacking you, you're going to lose it. I would like to have some sort of concept like this in Warframe, but not on the same scale as Eve, because Eve can be pretty brutal. So, you know. Yeah. No, uh, I agree. I, uh, For example, I started playing, uh, as you guys know, I started playing like about a year ago. Um, I'm personally like happy with the tactical alerts whenever they uh, come up, because there's a new weapon that I can pick up. But other than that, like I don't really care for the tactical alerts themselves. Some of them are kind of fun to do, but most of them just feel like more of the same types of missions. While the events themselves actually feel like uh, we're having impact. Uh, for example, the, the latest one with the, the Snipetron. Uh, when that one came out, uh, all kinds of people in my uh, stream were asking things like, um, Dimitri, did you pick up the Snipetron yet? Dimitri, how far are you into the tactical alert? Did you pick up your Snipetron yet? While with uh, things like... Um, the, the event like the Nef Onyo versus Alad V, it was who are you supporting? Um, how like how many times have you run the mission yet? Like who are you trying? Uh, who do you w- want to win and things like that? They were asking more related questions. They were interested in the lore, and with the tactical alerts, it just feels like another tiny little thing to do on the side while to get yourself another weapon. It's basically the same as doing a void mission, trying to get yourself a prime weapon, and I feel like that is one of the things that I would like to see. Like just no, more events, I would like to see like actual the big impact events because those were a lot of fun to do. They feel like you have an impact. While the tactical alerts are like, well, it's a nice thing to do on the side, you know, pick up a weapon, pick up like an emblem or two, and be done with it. That's about it. I would love to uh, see more, just more bigger events that have an actual impact on the game. Yeah, 
I agree with you on that point as well. All right. Is there anything else we want to add to that one? Not really. No, I don't think so. I think that pretty much we've covered all the bases, so we should be good. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, let's see. So we've discussed Trinity Prime Access. We're basically like, uh, we love how Trinity Prime looks, how she feels. We love the fact, uh, the direction that D is going with it, not just like just making a prime frame and giving it ridiculous increase in stats, but also like, you know, a bit of moderation in there, but still making it definitely worth picking up. The the aesthetics look amazing. Um, Kavasa Prime Color, where it's, an, it's, a, it's a first step, I would say, but um, it could have been better. Dual Kama Primes are pretty nice. They're just nice all around to have. Some people are upset with them, but I think uh, all of us here are pretty happy with it. Uh, void, parm uh, void Prime Farming, get rid of uh, things like the keys, the organ cells, um, re remove some of them, move them around to like uh, things like the organ derelict or rotation A and B and the, like the lower level endless missions. Some of the older sets like Rhino as well, move those around. We have like an entire derelict that's just there with barely any parts in it. Um, mini bosses, Stalker needs to be a bit more spooky. Sonica Hunter needs like a big buff because he is absolutely well, definitely not scary. He's completely useless right now, I would almost dare to say. G3 is just fine. Death Squad, some of them, things like Loka and uh, Suda and Redville feel nice. They feel like in place they, they are actually a threat, but things like the Rollers from Steel Meridian, they definitely need a buff. They need a change. Things like, you know, actual squads of themselves, like of, uh, squads of Bombards, Heavy Gunners, Lancers and Shield Lancers showing up, things like that. And... Um, the final thing was uh, the events where we just feel like we need we want more big events that have an actual impact. Things of like the skill of the Baylor Fomorians or the Nef Onyo versus um, LNV fights as well. The attack alerts themselves feel a bit uh, of an addition to the game where it's just like, well, you can just pick up your new weapon here and the older players are like, well, we don't really want to, like, we kind of want to do this, but on the other hand, there's not much to gain for us because we already have the weapon. There's not much, no reason for us to feel like like we have to do this event or we're missing out and i think that was about it anything else uh, you guys want to add in there or uh that no. sums it up well, pretty well i, I think, think that pretty sums pretty much sums everything up yep yeah, pretty much all right in that case, uh, I think it's about closing time. Um, thank you for listening, guys. This was a suddenly Tenno episode to something old, something new. Joining me today were Headshot. You can find on the screen, you know, his information at hedge, uh, at underscore Headshot with a three and an O uh, at Twitter, youtube.com slash Headshot. Frozen Balls joined me today as well at Frozen Balls and twitch.tv forward slash Frozen Balls. And of course, me, Dimitri V2, Dimitri underscore V2 at Twitter and twitch.tv slash Dimitri V2. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.